Welcome to the cloud family. I'm going to walk you through everything that comes in your box and then we'll get started with the installation. In your box, you have your system, which is broken up into three parts, your magazine, your base, and your tank. The magazine already has all of your filter stages and battery pre-installed for you. Let's keep the base and the magazine separated for now because when you're working through the installation, it's a lot easier to work with this smaller base under your sink than the entire system put together. You also have all the accessories needed for the install. You have your tubing, which has pre-connected fittings, including a pressure regulator and your waste saddle valve, as well as a T-valve. This is used to connect the system to your incoming water supply and out of the box, it comes with a 3.8 by 3.8 compression fitting, which is very standard for most kitchen sinks. We've also included a conversion piece in case you have a half inch compression fitting under your sink. We also have a couple of zip ties so you can tidy up the tubes at the end, a quick connect wrench, and then some extra C-clips. All the C-clips are pre-installed for you, and these are just a few extra in case you need them. You're also gonna need a couple of items from home. You'll need a screwdriver, a wrench, scissors, and a drill. For your drill, just make sure you have a quarter inch drill bit to put a hole in your waste drain. Lastly, it's a good idea to bring a towel. There might be a few drips when we disconnect the faucet line. Okay, let's get started on the install. All the connections throughout the system use quick connect fittings. I'm going to walk you through a quick tutorial of how to use these fittings in case you need to uninstall or shorten any of the tubing. To remove the fitting, simply pull back on the collar, which releases the tube and allows you to pull the tube out. We've also included a quick connect wrench in case it's difficult to get your fingers into the collar of the fitting. Put the wrench on the tube, pull the collar back, and pull the tube out. When you're making the connection, just make sure you push the tube in all the way to this guideline and give it a quick tug to confirm that it's secured. If you do need to shorten any of your tubes, you can use any scissors and just make sure you're making a clean perpendicular cut to the tubing and then go ahead and reinsert it into the fitting, push firmly and give it a quick tug to confirm it's secure. The first step in your installation is to get your drinking water faucet installed in your countertop. Before you can install the faucet, you need to make sure that you have a hole in place. Oftentimes you can repurpose a soap dispenser or a sink sprayer, or you can drill a hole in your counter. The hole only needs to be as big as this small stem. So it can be anywhere from a half an inch to one and a quarter inches. To install the faucet, first take off this rubber tip. Slide on the base plate and place the faucet in the hole. Align the faucet to your liking and then head under your sink to tighten it. To tighten the faucet, slip on this plastic washer followed by the locking nut. Screw this locking nut until it reaches the bottom of the countertop and tighten it into place. Hand tighten as tight as you can. And then let's go ahead and install your faucet tubing. Find your tube labeled faucet and take the end with the open quick connect fitting and plug it into the base of the stem. You should hear an audible click and just give it a little tug to make sure that tube is secured in place. All right, let's move forward with the next step. The next step is to shut off your cold water supply, install your T-valve and connect your inlet tubing. Under your sink, you're gonna have two different supply valves, a cold water supply and a hot water supply. Make sure that you're only working with your cold water and never feed the system with hot water. Shut off your cold water by turning the stop valve, typically clockwise, to the off position. Turn your cold water at your sink on to make sure that no water flows. 
to confirm the water's been shut off. To double check to confirm that your cold water is in fact off, just go ahead and open the cold water at your kitchen sink. You can even turn it to the hot position and you'll see that the hot water still runs. And if you turn it back to cold, the cold water is off. That's your confirmation that you're now ready to install your T-valve. Once you've confirmed your cold water is shut off, let's disconnect your sink faucet hose. Take your wrench and loosen this hose. At this point, it's a good idea to place your towel under this valve because there's usually a couple drips that come out when you disconnect the hose. Once you've removed your faucet hose, let's go in ahead and install our T-valve. Just make sure that there's an O-ring in place in the T-valve because these can sometimes fall out. Connect your T-valve directly onto your supply. I'm working with a 3 8 by 3 8 compression fitting, but we've also included half inch in case your sink requires it. Okay, once the supply side is connected, let's connect the faucet hose. Once those are in place, use your wrench to tighten. Now these have O-rings on the inside that create the seal. So you don't have to make these overly tight because you could potentially damage that O-ring. Once it starts to feel tight, give it another quarter to half turn so it's really secure. I'll go ahead and do that with my faucet hose side as well. Good. I just want to point out this small arm on your T-valve. This arm controls the water flow into your system. When it's in this parallel position, parallel to the outlet port, the water is flowing or open. If you ever need to shut off the water to your system, but you want your sink water to continue to run, go ahead and turn this to the perpendicular position. And let's actually keep it in that closed position for now until we turn our water supply back on. Once your T-valve is in place, go ahead and insert your inlet tubing. Make sure you push the tube all the way to this guideline. You'll notice we've already pre-installed this C-clip for you. That's really gonna hold that hose in place. Let the loose end of the tubing fall to the bottom of your cabinet and we'll connect that into the base in a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next step. The next step of the installation is to install your waistline and saddle valve onto your drain pipe. I'm working in a single basin sink, so there's just one drain pipe that runs through the garbage disposal. The most important thing when picking a location for your drain saddle is that you make sure it's before or on the sink side of this P-trap. I'm going to put my saddle valve here. If you have a two basin sink, you can also install the saddle valve on the drain pipe running parallel or away from the garbage disposal, or on a horizontal piece of pipe connecting to the other drain line. Once you've selected your hole location, let's make a quarter inch hole in the drain pipe. When you're making this hole, you just wanna make sure that you're only going through one side and not through the entire pipe. Once you have the hole in place, you're ready to install your drain saddle. The drain saddle comes in two pieces. So the first step is just to remove the back piece by unscrewing these screws from the bolts. Remove the back piece and use a small piece of tubing sticking out as a guide to place the drain saddle. Go ahead and stick that right into the newly drilled quarter inch hole. Once that's in place, you can add the backing and screw the screws back onto the bolts.
hand tighten the screws at first, and then you're gonna use your screwdriver to finish tightening. The drain saddle should really hug the drain pipe, so don't be afraid to really tighten these screws down. and two. All right, now we're all set. Let's move to the next step. Once you have all of your tubes in place, you're ready to install the system itself. Let's start with the tank. The tank is designed to fit front back with the base and any standard size cabinet. But you never really have to access the tank, so feel free to get creative with space. Before I place the tank, I just wanna point out this small valve at the top. When the tick mark is pointing this outlet port or the RO tubing, it's in the open position. If you turn it 45 degrees to this closed tick mark, it shuts off the water in case you need to remove the tank or move the system in the future. In this space, I'm going to place the tank behind my drain pipe. So that it's out of the way. Once the tank is placed, go ahead and plug in your tank tubing. Push it into the quick connect fitting and make sure that it goes all the way to the guideline. Once you have your tank placed, let's go ahead and install our base. Before you connect any of the tubing, you need to remove these blue plugs. These plugs can simply be pulled directly out. We wet test every system and so the plugs just keep the water inside the base so it doesn't drip in the packaging. You'll also notice that we've pre-installed these blue C-clips for you. Those just tie down the tubes once they're inserted. First, make sure that you have a position for your base that fits and allows the door to close with this lever in the upright position. Once you've picked your spot, let's connect all of our tubing and we're gonna work clockwise starting with your faucet tube. Each of the tubes have a pre-installed fitting 90 degree elbow, and these just click into the port. You'll hear an audible click. Next, I'm gonna move on to my inlet. This is the line labeled inlet. Next one is my waist. And lastly, I have my tank tube. Great. Once you have all those in place, go ahead, put your base in its final position and push the lever down so it's ready to receive the magazine. Before I put my magazine on, I wanna tidy up some of these tubes. You should have a couple zip ties included in your accessory pack. Go ahead and install those zip ties Keep your tubes all tightly together. I like to put one closer to the base and then a second one to really control them up a little higher. All right, now that those tubes are out of the way, we can go ahead and place our, our magazine onto the base. You'll notice the magazine has small peg feet. You can use those as a guide to line the magazine up on the base. And you'll notice there's a small gap here. We need to put pressure on the top of the magazine until that gap goes away. And then lift the lever to confirm that the magazine is seated. You can give it a little rock just to make sure. and you should be good to go. Once you have the magazine seated on your base, your installation is complete. Now let's go ahead and turn on your water. First, open up your cold water supply. Second, use a small arm to let water into the system. 
you should hear a small burst of water coming into the system as it begins to pressurize. Next, open up your newly installed drinking water faucet and wait for a small trickle of water to flow. Once you turn your cold water back on, open up your drinking water faucet and wait for some water to flow. It'll take a while, two to three minutes, sometimes even longer, for any trickle of water to start coming from your faucet. Once you see the small drip or trickle coming from your faucet, that's your sign that your system is ready to start the flushing protocol. You'll see that the drip is very small, but once you see any water flowing from your system, it's your sign you can close the faucet and let the tank fill. It'll take about an hour for your tank to completely fill. After that hour is complete, open up the faucet and let the entire tank drain again. You're gonna flush the tank three different times before you're ready to use your system. That's it, your cloud system is fully installed and ready to go. A couple of things I wanna mention. One, you may notice some air spurting out of the faucet or some bubbles in your water for the next week or two. That's totally normal. It's the healthy minerals interacting with your water and will dissipate over the first seven to 10 days. Second, make sure to download and connect the cloud app so you can monitor your drinking water quality and consumption in real time. Enjoy your cloud water and thank you.